Cooper. Welcome back to my personal YouTube channel here. Thank you for joining us. If you're following along, then you know we're talking about cold frames. Now in this video, we're going to be talking about uh, how to plant them and how to get them ready for planting. You know, I might even go grab some, grab some seedlings and go ahead and get it started. But if you're following along with the series, you know that we've uh, already learned all about cold frames, uh, how to get them started, how to plan for them. We've learned how to build uh, this exact cold frame and uh, now we're going to talk about how to plant them. Stay tuned. I'm not going to go into all the details on the kind of dirt you need to get mixed up. But that's not what the content of this video is going to be about. It's simply, what am I doing to try to get these things ready for a season? And in my case, this area here where we have these planted is not an area where we're going to continue to garden season after season. So our goal is to not enrich all of the soil in the area and turn it into uh, a permanent garden. This is just simply a place where we currently get enough sunlight to have cold frames set up through the winter and we need to make uh, kind of like what you might do with a raised bed. Uh, we need to dig out a small portion uh, underneath the cold frame and, and, and uh, create a little um, uh, divot of quality dirt or good organic dirt. Uh, there on top and while we're at it we're going to go ahead and try to enrich some of the soil below it and in the process we're going to try uh, using worms and keeping worms alive throughout the winter so that's something we're going to follow along with as we continue to develop and, and, and go through this season together. Now because these things are so lightweight I was able to just pick them up and move them out of the way and in doing so, it leaves us with uh, exactly where I'd set them down, the lines that we need to work with. To get some of the native soil here broken up, I've been using this cobra head steel fingernail. And basically what it is, is it's a little tine-shaped uh, cultivator almost that you can use to pull up rocks. And I was using that just to create a, a hole where I could shovel it out and then use that loose dirt to fill in around the edges of each one of these cold frames. Now as we're filling in around the edge that also helps us to seal off the space around this bottom area so that we don't get any airflow that continues to cause a uh, cooling effect through the winter. It helps us again to control the ventilation a little bit more effectively. And that's what we're going to always go after when we set up these cold frames and when, we've, uh, when we're trying to grow uh, plants throughout a very cold season. Now, in my case, because the way this soil was, it had so, much, um, so many roots and, and rocks and, and really weeds here in this area, the way this soil was uh, before I started working it now, just now for the cold frames, um, I decided, you know, it would be better to put down some paper, um, and so we used some newspaper and, 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 and brown paper bag and just uh, place that down in the bottom of the divot area uh, where we have now room for quite a bit of dirt, good healthy dirt that we've mixed up. We're placing that healthy dirt in there, and then we'll put some worms in on top of that after we get done here planting. But once this is going, um, that paper will help to prevent uh, the weeds from coming back up um, through the good healthy soil and it also encourages uh, the worms to tunnel down and start to work into the soil below it. And hopefully then, like I mentioned before, at the beginning of our summer season, we'll have a good amount of healthy dirt here. We we'll, should have made more dirt um, than what we currently have now, just because of the worms and the environment that we're creating here for them. Now, when you're thinking about planting your plants and you're laying them out uh, here, I, I think it's very common that you would plant your, your leafy greens in very small rows in tight little patches and then the goal then is that you are able to continue to harvest them um, small leaves at a time because through the winter time a lot of times uh, depending on where you live they're not going to grow to be large plants anyway so um, I'm, I'm going to be laying ours out 
uh, every two to three inches and then I'll be staggering them like this uh, as we plant them in. Now if it's going to be a large head of cabbage uh, maybe you would think about putting uh, four or maybe five or possibly six heads of cabbage in a cold frame of this size. Now like I was saying before we want to plant things fairly narrowly and I've already started to plant some Bloomsdale spinach and here's some iceberg lettuce sitting here behind me and uh, each one of our uh, plants are started in these small little pots and this is in 100 percent worm casting so now that it's uh, they've been started they're very healthy uh, we're going to just leave them in um, a narrow area or a small con contained space like this and plant them uh, just side by side and that's fine they're never going to grow to be large plants because of, of just the sheer space in which they're planted in so that's all we're going to do. It's that simple. I'm going to go ahead and plant in another uh, Bloomsdale spinach and then this section back here is going to be set up for iceberg lettuce. Now after we have our plants planted like this, finally the last thing that I would suggest that you do is that you mulch the top of them and around here we have plenty of leaves which is what I'm going to do. I'll grab a five gallon bucket, fill it up with leaves, crunch it up on the inside and, uh, and put it back over the top of the dirt here and that does a couple of things. First of all it adds organic material uh, it adds, which in turn is fertilizer. Uh, once we add our worms in over the top of this um, that will give them something to eat and feed on through the winter and uh, additionally it helps to keep the moisture contained down in the soil below and it keeps it from evaporating out so uh, it, you get multiple um, benefits just by putting a mulch over the top but again this is no different than any other garden that you may be growing on your property so I hope this video has been helpful please remember to give us a rating a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you didn't like the video but uh, we do appreciate your support and you being here. If you have been following along with this video series, uh, please note that there's going to be some more as we continue throughout the winter and throughout this next coming winter season for us here in North America. And uh, we're going to be talking about insulation, different types of insulation, uh, uh, measuring the difference in temperatures between one or the other, and even putting hoop houses over the top of this. And uh, so I'm very excited to get into that as we continue to cool down here in North America. So stay tuned. Uh, please remember to subscribe and uh, more to come soon.